Action. Setting up a new post AS226 fan or an Astro 2600 or an Imager 3.0 or 4.0. It'll come without the guides on it. The screws will pull, should be in the block here. Take the screws out, put the guide up on here, and put the screws back in. Also have your elevator. The screws should will probably be right here. Take them out. Put this down into place. This tab goes underneath the metal here. Line up the holes and put your screws back in. To set your mail piece, when you're setting it up for one piece, there's a little locking lever here. Push it down. You should be able to pick up your separator tips. For a postcard or anything thin, just use one. For an envelope, you might want to actually set two of them in there at a time. I'm just going to set it to one since it's something thin. Put it down, and lock it back in. Now it should actually be set so one really can't get through there. This one can actually move. Let's line up my guides. Now it should be pretty much centered on the piece. It doesn't have to be exact. I want it up against but not so close that it's going to hold back the piece. I'm going to put the pieces in. I'm going to fan fold them. Back like that. push this down so it's just barely picking up the pile. Something just like that. The cartridges. This unit actually has two, two, one, and one. Cartridges in. I'm going to put them in kind of at an angle. Don't push it all the way back in like that. You can find that it's hard to clip down. Just let them sit forward a little bit and lock it in. The best thing to do would be to take a lint free cloth with a little bit of water on it and wipe off that cartridge. I'm going to skip that for right now. Remove the heads. Unlock this. Slide it back and forth. Right now I'm just going to leave it like that and get an idea of where it's going to print by just kind of trying to line it up, eye it up a little bit. I wanted to use the first three cartridges. I didn't need these, I could move these out of the way. into the back bottom and the power switch is right by the power cord. With it offline, that's offline now, and steady. It'll say online and the online key will light. Hit the menu. It goes to a media thickness setup. where I can actually check my thickness. Unless you can hear the heads go up and down. Anything small, you're pretty much going to be right at the bottom. Something that thin. You can see a little bit up and now it's not holding on to it at all. A little bit down, and now it's got it again. You have exit rollers here. 
So you want to try to get going over top of the piece as it goes through. But you don't want to go in over top of your print area. Something probably right around there. Do a test. Go offline. Oop, gotta get out of the menu. And I'll bit print what whatever built-in test pattern you have set up on the machine. We put different test patterns in for different machines. In the menu, there's also, you can purge a printer. We try to set it up so the, um, the test pattern becomes a purge pattern, where it prints out a good bit of ink. Where you could do a perch here. Being glossy, this is going to be a mess, but. Plus or minus to go through the menu, through the batch count. That's going to be your counter that you see when you first put it online. I'll hit enter, back to zero. If we're running and it becomes jammed, we might need to go into address recovery and clear out the address buffer and actually reprint one or two. It's not going to let me do that since there's no data in there right now. Most of these you're not going to do much of anything with. If you want to try to keep um, track of how much ink is in the cartridges, you can go in here, when you replace one of the cartridges, like head one, filled, I'd hit enter, and it'd reset that cartridge to filled. Two, say I didn't do two, but it did number three, I can hit enter and reset that one. That's basically the main menu features that you're going to use.